Good evening! Welcome to Deadly Escapes with me, Dick Rose. Last week, we showed you what happens when cars just won't slow down. Next week, I cut off my own thumb. Now, we've got a very special film to show you. Now this is a true story, and it's got Dick Rose's seal of approval. Roll tape! Well, you know, it was just an ordinary day, just like any other. The sun was shining, and birds were in the sky. There's no way we could have anticipated what would have happened. All of a sudden, Adam cried out, he said, look up there. And there he was, standing all the way up there, all high up, on his own. And I thought, well, good, good God. What, what in the hell is going on? I just... I could not comprehend what was running through his head at this point, just to be up there all by himself. And geez, let me tell you, we was, we was shot at him to come down. We, we just could not believe what, what had happened. How did he get up there? What was he doing up there? We didn't know. There was no indication of anything, anything at all. So we, we were shouting and we were saying, hey man, come down, come down. But he was getting all cocky. He, he would not come down. You know, he was... He was doing all this, and he was, he was, he was dancing around, prancing as if he was some kind of acro bat. And boy, I feared for him that, I, I really did. Eventually, I don't know, something must have changed his mind, because down he came, he, boy, he gave a big leap, he, he really went for it, and, and I saw him, and I thought, he, he's not going to make it, that, that drop is just too high, I disbelieve him. One hand, it landed upon that, that rail, you know, holding him up strong. He always was a strong boy. He hit it well, but I, I knew, I knew that it was there. The other hand, in his pocket, all casual-like, as if he hadn't cared in the world. And his face showed no sign of struggle, no shot of emotion at all. In fact, I doubt as if he was even feeling anything. I, I, I don't know. Just hung there. What seemed like an eternity. Just hanging and swinging one hand in his pocket, the other on the rail. I'm sorry, I can't. Can turn the camera off, please. I don't think I can go on. Welcome back. Now it takes two to tango, and you've heard from one of the key witnesses there that day, but there was another, and he ain't jiving no more. Now, we couldn't get him in the studio for an interview, but tonight, Dick Rose gives you a world exclusive. Now get him on the phone! Hello? Hello? Dick! Dick! We hear you loud and clear, son. Now folks, this is Adam. How you doing today, Adam? Not too good, to be honest with you, Dick. Not too good. How far do you cats go back? You and Cass, I mean. I've known Cass him since I was about 15 years old. Now, we all know the first impressions count, don't we, boys and girls? What do you first think of Cass him, huh? I thought he was a jumped at prick. He used to sit in front of me in English, slating my fiction, as if he was some god or something. What a prick. We bonded over Pokemon. And I said, which is better, the red or the blue? And he said, the blue. And I took his word for it, and I fucking bought the blue, and it was fucking shit. The red's way better. I'll go on record as saying that. It's crap, man. Fucking Pokemon Mewtwo. And yeah. how's that relationship changed over the years? Our relationship it hasn't changed at all, really. And it still relies on me constantly criticising what he does. I bring him down a peg or two, and I think he appreciates it in the long run, really. I dislike the guy's attitude. I think he's smug. He's a vegan, and he only did that because I'm a vegetarian. He's trying to outdo me all the time. He takes European martial arts. He was doing Victorian stick fighting or something like that. He thought he was Jack the Ripper or something. The bit that everyone's talking about, something unbelievable happened. Adam, where were you? What did you see? All I know is he disappeared. I turned to Gareth, I said, Where's he gone? 
And Gareth said, he's climbing. I said, what do you mean he's climbing? He said, he's climbing something. I turned around and he is climbing. He's climbing up some wooden structure. I'm can't be sure what it was. But before we know, he's at the top. He was waving, walking around. I honestly think he was, he was whacking off up there. Now, Adam, if you don't mind me interjecting, doesn't sound like you've got too many nice things to say about young Cass in there, huh? What, you have a run-in with him or something? He basically, he used to carry around this pen knife. And he just started threatening me with this pen knife because I was winding him up. And I said, pull it out then, I don't care. And he did as well. He pulled it right out, waving it about in my face. As if to say, you haven't got one of these, have you? But I fucking had. I think he even waved it in Gareth's face for a minute. I said to him, if you put that in me, that's staying in me. You're not getting it back. And how does Gareth get on with him these days? Gareth butters him the right way. Gareth is up Cassin's ass. You continue with that blue talk. I'm going to have to cut you off. You hear? Oh, fuck you, dick. <laughs>